on today's Taste Texas. So we're gonna do some, some delicious salmon. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do a whole roasted cauliflower and we're gonna serve the salmon on some greens. What Needle nose pliers, not <laughs> nose pliers. <laughs> MO Pro, that's like, I want some Mo Produce. You want Mo Produce, actually. <laughs> so pull up a chair and join us at the table. I'm Amy Kushner. And I'm Garth Blackburn. We are so happy to have you in studio today, as well as you viewing. Thanks for joining in. And I promise we are making something fantastic, something you're going to want to put on your table immediately. Tell us. So we're going to do, today's a healthy dish. So we're going to do some, some delicious salmon. Mm -hmm. We're going to do a whole roasted cauliflower, and we're going to serve the salmon on some greens. Ooh, it sounds very healthy. It is. It's going to be pretty let's healthy. Let's get cooking. Now, I want to doctor the cauliflower. Cauliflower, I, I grew up hating it, mm -hmm. but then I realized that you don't have to overcook it or steam it till it's mushy. Uh, and mom, I'm not saying anything bad about what happened growing <laughs> up, but, but regardless, I find that if you, if you get it crisp tender and you caramelize it, those two things will make a neutral vegetable much more tasty. And we got this delicious cauliflower from a farm visit. We'll go take a look later at MO Produce. But if you'll do me a favor and peel off the jacket, which are the greens. The jacket? Uh -huh. I it's never heard that. The jacket of greens. Hmm. And I'm going to make a marinade. All right. Which actually will end up kind of becoming a glaze for that okay. cauliflower. This is some Greek yogurt. In order to thin it a little bit, I'm going to use some Lucky Layla Farms drinkable yogurt. So this oh, is a, a, a Texas yogurt right there. Okay. A small amount of mayonnaise. A little bit of milking cream, not a lot. And now we're going to flavor it up. So I'm going to take a couple cloves of garlic that we minced. All right. Some salt. Pepper. If you'll squeeze this Meyer lemon into there, so it's half of a Meyer lemon. And then this is a great ingredient that adds a lot of layer of flavor. Mm -hmm. This is a Thai red curry paste. It's not going to make it taste Thai. I think I just heard ooh. Ooh. <laughs> a lot of times people hear curry and they cringe. Curry means nothing more than a blend of spices. That's all this is. It adds a lot of pepper to it. It'll provide a little bit of heat. And then for some nuttiness, I've got some freshly uh, grated is that parm? and pulsed Parm, a little parm? industry term for Parmesan it's a cheese. Parm. <laughs> and will you whisk that together for me? Sure. So you're going to coat this uh, cauliflower yes. with all of this amazing goodness? Yes. Oh my. And then we're going to roast it in the oven at okay. 425 degrees okay. for about 25 minutes so it gets really golden and pretty on the outside. Ooh, this looks amazing. Yeah? Let's just let's dump, dump it. this in first right. and then we can put it on top. So there you go. Why don't you take care of that? Mm. Okay. Hold on. Why couldn't we just pour it on? I think that would have Because we, we wouldn't be getting it down in the bottom. We want it to kind of bleed into the bottom of that. So you need to fully toss that. I gotcha. Always giving me the dirty work. It's part of being the chef, wearing the white chef coat. <laughs> okay. This is a sticky mess, but All I right. bet so it's So now I think amazing. you're ready. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And we can pour a little bit on the top. Yeah. More of that. See, this is how I <laughs> stay away from the food because that didn't happen in my kitchen. Hey, you made me work, we'll get to lick our fingers, right? <laughs> All right. Okay. That's what got you fired from your first restaurant job, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what we've got right here. I gotta wash this hand, I'll be back. <laughs> this is some sockeye salmon. Now this is where I just split off a little bit from the beaten path of uh, Texas ingredients. I don't think you want to eat a salmon found in the Gulf of Mexico. So <laughs> sockeye salmon, it's gonna be a very pretty fish. You'll also find that it's a much more consistent thickness. Yes. And I'm gonna be doing 
the entire salmon because I think it's such a beautiful presentation to take this whole side of fish uh -huh. and lay it out. Uh, but the problem is if you get like a, a big salmon that it might be an inch and a half, two inches at one end and maybe half an inch at the tail end. So you decide that you undercook part of it, you're overcooking the other. Right. Instead, for the sockeye, it's gonna be very consistent. Okay. Okay, now, the reason it looks a little bit torn up on the top is that I had the fish guy pull the bones out. So if you have forgotten to have that done, you'll need to take some needle nose pliers Probably want to wash them first, get the mechanical grease off of them, but that'll pull every bone out. And you thought my licking my fingers was gross. <laughs> did you say you're nose little... pliers? What Needle you... nose pliers, not nose pliers. <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh. Oh, oh uh, okay. <laughs> See how things roll in your kitchen with kitchen gadgets. I was gonna give, give you all a great tip on how to take the skin off of the salmon, but I don't know if I can focus anymore after the nose pliers. <laughs> okay, cut a little bit of meat off the tail. I have a really good dishwasher. <laughs> Not good enough for nose pliers. Oh, goodness. You'll take that skin, hold it from the bottom. <laughs> just keep the knife in place. And I just keep pulling the skin. Look at that. So look how little meat is left on the skin. And no nose pliers needed. No nose hairs in there, that's for sure. So with I'm gonna thought, recover from this. With that thought, please come back. We're gonna take a quick break. Good luck. <laughs> Get onto the salmon. Okay, so what we're gonna do is put a little salt and pepper on our salmon. Okay. I wanna add a little bit more flavor to it. That's gonna be in the form of some smoked paprika. Nice. And then if you wanna ensure some delicious caramelization, add a little bit of sugar. So this is brown sugar. Yes. This is from Imperial Sugar, which is a Texas-based company that out of great. my hometown, Sugar Land, Texas. More sugar for the sugar. Hey, I want to mention that we went on this awesome trip we want to tell everybody yeah. about. We stayed at this beautiful place called the Inn at Chachalaca Bend. And it's this really precious place on a little riverbank um, down in the valley. And we had such a great time. They hosted us there while we got to go visit lots of locations, including this really cool place on a cold day called M.O. Produce. Y'all take a look. The label is M.O. Produce. Um, we've got, you know, we, we're doing some business under Tanasa Farms. So it's M.O. Produce, that's like, I want some M.O. Produce. You want M.O. Produce, actually. <laughs> is that right? Uh, it's, it's our last names, you know, oh. Miller, Miller Ortiz and, and Murray. And you're looking at a certified organic operation. Uh, we grow, I would say, anywhere from 15 to 18 different items. What, what are y'all growing right now? We've got, uh, we've got broccoli, cauliflower, collards, uh, lacinato kale, green kale. Uh, lacinato is also the dinosaur. The dinosaur kale, yeah. Um, we've got romaine lettuce, green leaf lettuce, um, red beets, golden beets, red Swiss chard, green Swiss chard, rainbow chards, um, cilantro. Oh, really good. Want some? Thanks, Carlos. <laughs> I didn't beat that. <laughs> what? You take a look at like industry t statistics, like so much produce, it's like the average that travels like 2,700 miles or 1,800 miles spent on the produce. I mean, at least you're here in this heyday, right, of the demand for Texas mm -hmm. produce when you're in Texas. Yeah, that's been a big a big push for us, the Go Texas campaign. I mean, I'm sure you all have seen that on, right. on, on labels, and, right. and that's that's helped us out. And, you know, I mean, we like to do the Go Texas deal and and do the local, I guess, local organic movement is kind of what we're, what we're on. I kind of feel like it's like, like, like a swaddled baby. How long have y'all been here at this property? Two years. Yeah, we've been working on it three years now. You know, it took us a, a full year to get it leveled and, and, and cleared and root plowed and everything. And we, we have a microclimate down here. I mean, we're, we're close to the coast. Uh, the problem is we're so variable with, with, our, with our weather. You know, one day, hell, the other day it was 83 degrees and, you know, tonight it's supposed to be 38. So there's a big fluctuation in temperature, so. 
just got to get lucky most of the time. That's what comes with living in tech. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Mark, Michael, thank you all very much. Thanks for the broccoli. But that, that'd be cauliflower. Oh, it was so cold out there, but so much fun and beautiful, beautiful produce. We've so got we the cauliflower roasted in the oven. To pair with that, we've got the salmon, the sockeye salmon that we did the seasoning, did a little bit of the brown sugar on. Right. I'm going to have you put down a little bit of oil on our griddle here. Okay. Just go straight up and down right there or okay. sideways. Okay. Or, <laughs> or just there you go. wherever you'd like. There's plenty. It's not going to burn now. Okay, and I'm going to swirl it a little bit to make sure to make sure that it's not gonna stick. Because if you just lay that salmon down or the fish down, it pushes all the oil out from underneath it. Right. And then it starts touching the bare metal, which is gonna make it much more likely to stick. Okay. So if you want really pretty caramelization, like restaurants have, right. two things. One's gonna be putting that sugar on, because sugar starts to caramelize. And the second one is gonna be plenty of oil and swirl it. And really, if you have extra oil on the griddle, I mean, if you drizzled oil, two tablespoons in the back of your hand every day for a year, how much weight are you gonna gain? None. Right, because it's not absorbing. We're not putting panko breadcrumbs on this fish. It's not gonna suck in the fat. We're just gonna get a much prettier sear. That sounds really good. So about two minutes, we're gonna flip it. We'll pull it off. Then it's gonna go back onto our sheet tray. That'll get finished off in a 350 degree oven for okay. about five to 10 minutes, depending on the thickness of the fish. Wow, ooey gooey cauliflower <laughs> with lots of sauce. And Did I title it ooey gooey cauliflower? <laughs> I just titled it ooey gooey yummy cauliflower and beautiful sockeye salmon. Y'all stay with us. We'll be right back. gorgeous it caramelized this salmon is already becoming it's looking great in fact so we've got a great sear it's not quite cooked through so okay. Amy if you'll pull that off and put it into our baking dish sure oh oh help me out because I don't want this thing to break ready one two three <laughs> there we go all right let's take a look at it's that gorgeous Okay, we've got a sauce to make. Okay. We've got to make some greens. So I'm not going to put this in for a couple of minutes. Okay. We'll just put that off to the side and it's finish it off really later. It's going to cook really fast. It is going to cook really fast. Okay. okay while we're doing that, uh -huh. we're going to render a little bit of bacon grease. If you'll okay. drop that, drop that into that back pan. And you've got your heat on. Medium heat. Okay. Or I'll drop it in for you. There you go. How about okay. that? All right. So then we're going to saute some onions. Mm -hmm. Well, we've got two things going on here. This is going to be for our greens mm -hmm. that we got from Mo Produce, which you and I like to call. Mo. Because we want some Mo produce, right? <laughs> I, mean, I just think that that makes sense. This is going to be for our sauce, which is going to be kind of a different spin on a tomato sauce. Mm -hmm. Some Texas olive oil. Will you put that whole container of onions in there for me? Sure. OK, I'm going to slice up a little bit of garlic. OK. okay. Oh, it's going to start smelling really good now. It is. These are some Marfa Texas tomatoes. Mm -hmm. And you got to half them? Yes. Oh, you know what? You haven't halved them the Garth way, have you? Yeah, I have. I didn't do it very well, but I'll try again. Give it a shot. It's practice okay. makes even perfect. Pra well, then <laughs> practice make to do practice makes perfect. You have to have practiced, right? How much have you been practicing, Amy? Not that. <laughs> this is your first time since that's pretty good. Remember a serrated knife, regardless how you're going to cut those tomatoes, always use a serrated knife. That'll keep from pressuring that skin in. And on these little like grape or marzano tomatoes, the skin proportionally is very thick. So if you go to press into it with a knife like this, even if it's pretty sharp, you're smashing the tomato, the juice is running out, and you don't get it to go into the sauce. Uh, a couple of them got left behind, but anyway. You know, when all your fingers are attached, which that's really the main goal <laughs> when we're right, cutting tomatoes right like this. Right there got left behind. There we go. So let's put those into this sauce. Okay. So again, we got some onions and garlic. Mm -hmm. You want them in here? Uh-huh. I'm going to okay. move this bacon around. This is some Texas pecan wood smoked bacon. And it must be Texas pecan wood smoked bacon. It must be. <laughs> it must be. Yum. And as I start to see a little bit of caramelization on the bacon, mm -hmm. I'm going to add my sweet onions to that. Oh, wow. 
I'm also going to put some garlic in here. Okay. Will you give you a little smell that? Okay. Well, the bacon's kind of stuck. It'll render out as soon as the fat starts to cook out of it a little bit more. Okay. okay the same thing right here. Okay. Okay, now this is where the sauce, it's, okay. <laughs> try and keep some of it in the pan. <laughs> this is where the tomato sauce. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's that. I want to be able to serve at least two or three okay. people. <laughs> it is going to uh, not bad. Just a few pieces on the floor. Change up a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit of briny and salty flavor. That's going to be in the form of capers. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want to add a little bit more salt and brine. Nice. That's going to be in the form of olives. Love that. And I got a mixture of different olives. Some of these are marinated as well. It's very important, even if you're just going to have the olives, to make sure you cut into each one of them. Yeah, you didn't see that, did you? <laughs> cut into each one. If you do buy pitted, to make sure there are no pits. Okay. So put that in. And then for kind of a cool, funky, sweet kick. Yeah. Some Texas blueberries that were sun-dried. So when they were in season last year, last summer, uh, these were actually sun-dried and then can be kept in your freezer. Or you can just buy them. Uh, and those as they start to absorb that liquid. Mm -hmm. You didn't see that either, did you? <laughs> as you start to absorb that liquid, we've got sweet, we've got salty, we've got briny, a little bit of sour. It's gonna go so great on the salmon because salmon does really well with sweet, salty, briny with all, all of it. All the flavors going on. And I tell you what, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the oven because we'll be ready nice. in less than five minutes. So we got all these combinations going on. You know you can smell it. I wanna hear before we break out, ooh. Ah, <laughs> we'll be right back. All right, it's a pork kitchen today in the Subzero Wolf Prep Kitchen because we're using some Eden Creek Farm pork tenderloin uh, that we're going to put a little glaze on from Greer Farms. This is going to be a peach glaze that has some Grand Marnier triple sec in it. Give it a little bit of sweet. That's gonna go on top of a warm green bean salad. So let's get started. Just gonna take my French beans, cut off the ends, and then just slice them really thin. This way I don't have to blanch and shock them. So in fact, it can be a five minute meal. We'll only take about two or three minutes to cook from beginning to end. <clears throat> okay, so now we're gonna take our pork tenderloin. I've used this style a couple times. Several people have asked me more about it, so I'm gonna roll with it again. I'm gonna cut the pork into about one and a half inch thick medallions. Set those upright, and now I'll flatten them out. I want them about half of an inch thick so that as soon as they get seared, they're cooked through and ready to eat. Okay, I've got my pork pounded out. I'm gonna take my Greer Farm peach jam. Been keeping a clean hand, that's what I'm grabbing the jar with. Dirty hand right here. Clean hand, sprinkling some salt and pepper on this pork. And now I'll just get both hands dirty. Toss that in with that peach jam, which are Texas peaches that they preserve there at Greer Farms. I can just go straight in to sear this, or I can let this sit even overnight if you don't want to let it really absorb some of that sweet, some of that flavor. Now we're ready to go sear it off in the pan. Okay, so I preheated my Le Creuset pan. I'm gonna put a little bit of my grapeseed oil in there. Help get a nice sear, make sure that the sugar and that jam doesn't allow it to stick. Sizzle, sizzle. Uh, it's smelling incredible already. We're gonna sear it two to three minutes per side till it's pretty much cooked through, pull it off, and then I'm gonna toss down my green beans for my quick, warm green bean salad. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, look at all those sugars getting caramelized. The pork's getting an awesome sear. About two or three minutes on this side, we'll pull it while that meat rests. We'll make our warm green bean salad. Oh, awesome. Look at that caramelization from that peach jam. We'll just set the meat to the side to let it rest. 
Now I'll take my green beans and you can substitute asparagus if you prefer. We're going to toss these around, have them pull off some of that sweet sugar that's caramelized on there. And now we're going to deglaze the pan with a little bit of aged white wine vinegar. You can use any white wine vinegar or even uh, red wine vinegar as well. I'm going to add a little more, more sweetness with some Texas wild cherry balsamic. It's a little sweet and sour. And now for the nuttiness to bring it all together, some toasted sesame oil, some Marcona almonds. Mix that up. It's pulling all the little bits and pieces off the bottom of the pan. Okay, look at those green beans. Those almonds and all that glaze. One for the counter. So we're gonna build that up nice and pretty. Put our pork right on top of it. And now, a little secret weapon, we've got some sweet pickled peppers. Say that three times fast, along with Virginia sides from her pea farm. She makes some sweet and spicy pickled jalapenos and pickles. It's gonna be my garnish for the top to continue that sweet and spicy theme. And there you go, ready to dig in. Y'all enjoy. All I know is you've got some greens to add to this dish. We got some and greens. And things to come out of the oven. Greens and bacon with garlic and onions. That's what's going down here. Oh. Nice. Why don't you toss that around for me? Okay. A little bit of kosher salt, freshly cracked black pepper. Okay. This is a mixture of kale, chard, and spinach. And I think we need some mo of it from MO Produce. <laughs> Put some mo in there. Some more greens to go with the tomatoes and the olives and the capers and those sun-dried blueberries. A little bit of Texas basil in this other sauce. Wow, you got a lot of greens in here. And I tell you what, while you're getting all of that rolling, I'm going to go ahead and pull. You weren't kidding when you said this is a healthy dish. It is a healthy <laughs> dish. Tell you what, look at that, Amy. Wow. Isn't that gorgeous. Yes. Ooh. You know, the last time I saw, y'all are good. That's right, let's the last time I saw a big headed cauliflower, that was amazing. <laughs> is this a comment? Some relation to the fact that she seems to think that... Look on the Facebook wall, you'll yeah, see. <laughs> I won't make any comments about the correlation between that giant cauliflower and the size of my head. All right, put a little bit of green sound right here, just a small amount. Small amount. Small amount. That's going to be our base. Okay. Or our cauliflower. Okay, that's good right there. There you go. Okay. Wow. Okay, now I'm going to have you... That is really pretty. Stir that sauce up for right. me. I'm gonna take. You love to serve your dinner on platters, I noticed. I do, it's kind of a family style. Uh huh. I think that uh, it just kind of brings everybody into the family. They see this giant platter, all the food like ready and to it's serve. it's one thing to clean. I love that concept. <laughs> Can't beat that. <laughs> that is a brilliant cigar. Nice. I cannot wait. I gotta grab a fork. I have got to taste this. Okay, that there's our salmon. beautiful, yes. The crowd is getting excited. And just so you'll know, that if you come to our tastings, you get to taste this after the show. Yes, you do, because we like to serve our guests. See, listen, they're so excited. <laughs> but you can download this recipe on our website, and that is tastetexastv.com. Also on all social media, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, Facebook. we're there as well. Excuse me, may I? Oh, of course. <laughs> oh, you're buttoning out of the way. We gotta know how delicious this is, Garth. Everybody's dying to know. <sighs> it's really hot. I it is tell. really hot. See the steam coming up? Uh -huh. Then you can cut into the cauliflower like a giant steak, put it all together, and I think you guys are set for a pretty delicious week night. Oh, you're gonna love it. Y'all enjoy it. You're gonna love it. <laughs>